So what I do now is I show this video to the class and then um, ask questions about it really. I show, them, I show them the video and then ask questions about it. But the, the, the pre-work I do would be like get them interested in Irish and British culture and get them engaged in it in a, on a sort of primal level, talk about music, food, bring food in, get them talking about music and talk about the ethnic differences. Not really massive, massive ethnic differences between a British and English really, you can't really tell the difference. There are differences, but cultural differences are quite quite different, you know? We are two different ethnic groups. So let's start off with an exploration of a quick history overview of Irish history. Hey, just, just for a sec. Shh, shh. Just, it's okay, just, just, just give us two minutes. Okay? So basically, Ireland is settled by this Celtic tribe called the Gaelic people. Uh, the Celts have been living there for about 6,000 years, and they built a place called New Grange, which is an observatory, which was built 3,500 years ago, just about the same age as Xi'an City. And the observatory is here, it's called New Grange. New Grange kind of looks like a circular building like this. Right? Oh, wow. It's a circular mount, oh, wow. and there's a sort of door at the front oh, wow. which lets in the light yeah. from the solstice. The rising, yeah. it's the rising solstice sun, and it penetrates the tomb. It might be a burial mound, but it, 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 it's all about, you know, we. The ancient Celtic people were all about stone circles, like Stonehenge. They were built by the British Celts. The same thing. Stonehenge is a calendar, so it functions as a calendar. And the, the rising of the uh, the midsummer sun penetrates the uh, centre part of. Um, Oh, it's Stonehenge. It's an amazing structure which was built by the British Celts who are distant cousins of our Celtic people. We're the first people to live on this island. This island was basically forested here. All forested here. The central plains weren't forested, it's basically bog. But all here is forest, 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 forest. Which makes it impenetrable to an invading army because the Celtic people live in the forests and therefore can fight off. The Romans never attacked. Uh, Ireland. Why? Because there's nothing there. They only went to Britain to get the tin so they could make armory, uh, make arms and shields and stuff like swords and shields and stuff like that because there was tin in Cornwall, you know? So also on the edge of Europe it's very difficult to penetrate and the people are quite fearsome if you attack them. If you go as friends then they're the nicest people <laughs> in the world. Almost as nice as the Chinese. <laughs> they're great. Really nice. Okay, what happens then, a uh, hundred years after the French Norman invasion of England, which was in 1066, so a hundred years after that, it's 1168, the French go, you know what, let's have a go at Ireland, and they invade Ireland, but the character of the invasion at this point is quite different from the uh, invasion of England. Basically, the French are Celts, so the Irish go, hey, you're, you're the same people as us, who gives a shit, come and live with us. And what do the French bring? Well, the French bring this religion called Catholicism. Catholicism, which comes from Rome. So now, it's a pyramid. Okay? And the priests are not allowed to get married, but the priests are celibate. Before this time, before this time, Ireland is a deeply religious country. Deeply religious. Hey, hey. Ireland's a deeply religious country, okay? And monks and priests were allowed, you were allowed to be a monk for a while, you know, to get close to God or whatever it was. But priests were allowed to get married and have kids, you know, in their own land and stuff like that. The Catholic religion comes along and says, no, no, you can't get married because we want, the, we want your money, okay? This is, one the, this is the problem, right? With this form of monetarist driven religion. The Celtic church before this time, which emanates from around about the 4th century, 400 CD, is based on a respect for nature and holistic sort of like thinking. Um, and I don't know a great deal about it, but um, it's kind of mystical. And um, 
one thing I'm very, very proud of between this period is called the Gaelic Golden Age. Monks and nuns went out from Ireland on a thing called a white pilgrimage to set up schools, libraries and hospitals and universities. And that's possibly, in my opinion, why a lot of Europeans really like the Irish, because their ancestral experience of the Irish is based on the Irish's teachers and as evangelists of the gospel of Christ, builders of universities, that's what we did. We set up the universities in Oslo and Czechoslovakia and southern Germany and northern Italy in order to uh, roll out literacy for ordinary people. No, just really for just the elite really, but it's better than nothing, okay? We built libraries, that's what we did, and that was our golden period which is from the 4th century up until Norman invasion, right? This is our golden period. But the Normans are okay with us, they're cool, right? They're nice. You know, they marry us and they marry in and basically they become one of us. So basically, from this time here to 1460, the Irish now declared themselves independent from foreign rule, okay? Now, the English are hungry for resources and they invade in 1536 under Henry VIII. Why did he invade? Because of money. He wants money. Why does he want money? Why does anybody want money? He just wants money. And he, 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 it's a, it's a non-violent invasion really. What happens is he goes round saying, listen, now you are part of the British Empire. Um, if you swear allegiance to me, right, you're going to be part of the British Empire, okay? But it's just a subterfuge because it's all about invasion and there's a war begins really round about this time and by 1606, 50% of the country has been colonised by the British. What does colonisation mean? Well, it means you don't live in your own home anymore, you have to pay rent to me, okay? So you have to work for me at least, at least 10 or 20% of your time has to be given to me in terms of money, crops, food and so forth. Okay, so there's an attack on Gaelic culture and it begins under this Tudor English monarch. And then it accelerates under the Stuarts. Right? The Stuart monarch arrives on the throne in 1601 at the end of the death of uh, Elizabeth I, the Virgin Queen. And then the colonisation accelerates even faster after that with the invasion of the North by British Scots and British English people. They send in the army, they ethically cleanse uh, villages and um, force the indigenous people, the people who are already living there. Hey, 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 please guys, I'm trying to do a history lesson here. Right? And there's an internal displacement, so the Irish are then forced to live in the West. This is also exaggerated by an absolute war criminal called Cromwell who goes over there and murders a bunch of people north of um, Dublin. This is Dublin here. There's a little town here called Drogheda. Kills 30,000 people in about three days. Why? Because he wants to dominate the Irish. He wants their land, okay? He wants, he wants the income from their crops. He wants their income from the, the labour. It's a, this, is, this is British imperialism at its very worst. Right now, between 1700 to 1825, we've got 95% occupation of the country. The Irish culture somehow survives, okay? But then it's served a knockout blow by this terrible, terrible thing, which in our language is called the Great Suffering, and Gortomor. That means suffering and that means great. The English call it the Irish potato famine, erroneously, because they're blaming the potato on the famine, when in fact what it was was internal displacement, massive population densities in the poorer lands in the West. And when the, crop, when the staple crop fails, there's enough food in the country to feed the people, but the British fascist overlords won't give the indigenous population any food because they, re they regard us with racist contempt. That's why I'm anti-racist. Okay. Now, modern Ireland, look, this is the colonisation by the British Scots, but Irish people are also living there. In 1922, we finally become slowly, slowly, slowly become independent from the British Empire after a war which begins in 1916, okay? The first battle of independence begins in 1916 and it continues on. The British are far stronger than us, far more adva uh, advanced, and, um, and yet 
they also realize the morality of Irish independence, okay? And say, okay, okay, you can have this from here. This is where most of the, of the British Protestant settlers live, okay? So let's just have their little place there, and that's the shape of modern Ireland today. In 1948, the Irish declared themselves a republic, cutting all ties diplomatically, no, not diplomatically, just symbolically with the British Empire. To me, the British Empire is extremely ambivalent. Um, there's some good things about it, but if you look at it, if you're asking me, I just think that the British Empire is just a trail of tears, a terrible thing based on greed and uh, hunger for resources. I am anti-imperialist, I am anti-fascist, and I'm anti-racist. I hope you liked this quick overview of Irish history. Thanks for listening.